Hello everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and welcome to the Steward's Room where we'll be taking a look at racing incidents submitted by you guys and trying to make a determination on who, if anyone, was at fault. There's a link in the description to submit your own clips and feel free to check out the playlist link for more of these videos, specifically the first which acts as a scene setter. Also keep an eye out for the cards popping up on screen towards the end of each segment where you can vote on who you thought was at fault for each incident. So the five incidents that we have this week are pretty going to be pretty easy to decide actually and we're probably not even going to need the rules of racing that we normally use the document that we normally use and I do want to you know mix up these videos sometimes with things like this to kind of just go through plain and simple what you can't do and how people can be at fault so first up we've got a clip from a sports classic race where there's a bit of a coming together here and it gets a little bit messy in that section of the track now, if this was a content creator stream, I would probably be talking about, well, how how this is some seriously bad track design to have a bit of track that closes in on itself like that and goes from basically, what, three or four wide to barely two wide. So, if anything, this is the fault of the track, uh, more so than, you know, anyone else in this uh, incident. But what we can see is that the uh, the yellow Turismo gets a little bit too wide, hits the uh, hits the wall. The Cheberek is largely unaffected by uh, you know by, by that line. He's he he's doing okay, you know, taking his normal line. The the yellow Turismo is just a little bit wide, so Cheberek is just doing his own thing. Obviously, hits the Turismo because the Turismo is a lot slower. And then at this point, the uh, the black cheetah that we're looking at tries to uh, tries to take advantage of these two. Um, what on earth is that doing? It, <laughs> he tries to take advantage of the fact that these two have come together and are now slower, and he tries to sort of skip around the outside. Now, really, as you can see here, he he's not going to get that done. He's too close and the closing speed is too high. So really what he should have done at this point is brake. He should, you should see these brake lights come on and he should just wait and let these guys get through the, you know, the, this smaller section of the track. Now, if you don't know, this might be the first lap on, on this track. If you don't know that this smaller section is coming, then, you know, an argument could be made that he, you, you don't even think, but even so, the closing speed is too much and he's not he's not able to get around the Cheberek as we've seen here. He, he's not able to get around so he hits it. That knocks the Cheberek into the Turismo again. And uh, and then, you know, it, it all just goes on from there. So really, I would put this down to the fault of the Black Cheetah. He, he, should, have, he should have, you know quite easily being able to anticipate what happens there um, and seeing that they're slowing down just put on the brakes because there's no way you're getting around from that position um, and it, in a way you can kind of understand wanting to take advantage of you know mistakes happening in front of you and that's fine um, but you can't then also say that it wasn't his fault that the crash occurred if anything I would put it more towards the track creator for having such a terrible section of a circuit but there you go, especially if it's trying to be a proper circuit where you're doing proper racing. But uh, I'll leave a link to a poll in the top right, the card should pop up about now, that will allow you to vote on who you think was at fault for this incident. I'll probably leave the track creator in there as well. Um, but yeah, mainly that was to, to do with the black cheetah from my side. So next up we're on Forza Horizon 4, it's the final part of this point-to-point -point race. And uh, we see that the car on our left gets a little bit wide gives an opening right at the very end of the race for the red car to come through so let's have a look see what uh see what we can unpack from this so as you can see the car in front of us he messes up the corner a little bit and goes a little bit too wide and the red car that we're looking at the perspective of takes advantage of that and that's fine now they have a little bit of a coming together here but that's also fine you know they they, they, they get through that all okay then that the the yellow card just doesn't give up at that point um and and keeps moving to the right so you can see that sort of quite clearly here really you know that they, they have that coming together 
and then initially it's okay, you know, so they, they come together there, but they're both okay. And then you see that second movement to the right of the yellow car, the well, white, black, whatever you want to call it. He moves over to the right again, and obviously it's it's just a clear takeout at that point. He's he's continuing to move over to the right. Um, you know, you, you can see it quite clearly there. That there's, there's contact. He's pushing more and more over to the right because he knows that that will then send the back of the red car's car around. He'll spin around, and it's a classic pit maneuver. And and I, it, you know, it's quite clear that that's his game plan at that point uh, because he just doesn't stop and that's exactly what happens gets turned around but you know it's interesting what what is interesting and very telling about this is look at what the the yellow car does as soon as it looks like he's turning around he's turning around he's actually off the track at this point that's how much he but that's how badly he wanted to you know take him out um but you see that the yellow car immediately goes over to the left to get out of the way. You know, his work is done at that point, um, and he, he just wants to get out of the way and continue on and, and try to get the position. But that's not what happens. The red car manages to save it, thankfully, um, comes back across the track and, and, yeah, hits into the yellow car. And that's another takeout, but that was the fault of the yellow car for doing it in the first place. You know, it, he was just trying to save an incident that was all caused by... So that it was a bit of karma, really, this one. You know, he he tried to take him out. Uh, it worked for a little bit, but then um, the red car was able to save it and the yellow car really got what was coming to him in that one, I think. So again, I'll leave a link to a poll in the top right. It'll give you uh, the options to vote on who you thought was at fault for this one specifically. You can obviously comment down below as well. But uh, yeah, nice bit of karma on that one, I think. So back on GTA for this one, and supposedly according to the notes, this had been a long-standing debate, and I can't really understand why. It's pretty clear to me. Um, but the the pink Nero there moves over to the right and, and there's contact made, which he shouldn't really have done, but it's okay. There's a little bit of argy-bargy between the two of them and then the contact happens there. And that's, you know, that, that's as clear as it could possibly be as a takeout. Um, so the this is, you know, this is just a stunt race. It's, um, it's slipstream is on, where the catch-up is on, I don't know. But, it you know, if, if you go into a stunt race with some friends and you're still deciding that you're going to race properly and race with rules and not take each other out then that's fine you know a stunt race is just any other race if you're already applying a rules of proper racing to it that's fine so we can see here that this is where obviously the, the main incident happens the t20 gets up the inside the pink nero not neon is uh, isn't very happy about that and it's a cl another classic pit maneuver we've just seen it on the previous clip we see it here again he just moves over to the to the side. I mean, it, it's so obvious, you know, that the T20 is going straight and you can tell that by obviously comparing it to the side of the track. The T20 is going straight. He doesn't move over to the left. It's the, the knee roll that, that moves over to the right, hits the back end of the car, classic pit maneuver, swings around, and it's so bad that he ends up going completely off the track because it's a stunt race. And then there's jumps and things. But there you go. There's the movement over to the right. Turns him around. Continues turning him around. At this point, you know, even if this is like a bit of a mistake, when, it, you know, things like this can happen um, without, you know, without you intending it to happen, you can just come together. It can be a bit of GTA physics as well. It, it can happen. But at this point, if you, if you hit someone and at this stage, you should expect to see some brake lights come on here because that's how you avoid it getting any worse. So if you realize, you know, if this was a mistake, if this wasn't intentional, these brake lights would be coming on about now, but they don't. It continues. There's no brake lights. He just drives into him. If anything, he drives him, you know, into him even more, moving over to the left to kind of push him off the track. So, you know, this is as clear as it could be for a takeout. And obviously with proper racing, you can't do something like that. So again, 
card will pop up in the top right where you can vote on who you thought was at fault. Was it the black T20 for, I don't know, doing nothing? <laughs> or, or was it the pink Nero? Um, some of these might be a bit more clear cut than previous episodes. <laughs> so we're on Assetto Corsa for this one. And I, I, I like the, the thing that we see in the top right here. I'll just pause it before we see the clip. Um, you can see in the top right there, there's a little marker for this is this is us, this is our perspective, and this is the perspective of the car behind. We can see in the uh, the, the rear view mirror, we've got a car behind us as well. But it, it's interesting. It's good to have this so you can see you know where people are, even though you're in a you know cockpit view. So let's uh, let's move it on. We see that the car behind us gets a you know a better top speed as we change gear, gets up along the side and it pretty much got over um over to the you know in front of us but then it's a complete takeout again another one of the there's a mess there's a mess that's going on in front behind there's so many cars you can see across the track um and again it this one to me obviously it's a, it's another obvious one um like all the clips have been honestly from from today but it, it's it's questionable whether it was intentional or not. Because if you look again in the top left, top right, sorry, if you, you look at the, the the car on our left, see the position that, the, the way that he moves, at this point it's fine, they're both they're both traveling straight, it's fine. Um, but then he gets a little wobble on right there and then he continues wobbling a little bit more and a little bit more, loses some speed, goes over to the left, then back over to the right, you know, he was ahead and he was almost fully ahead. I think this wasn't intentional. I think that this was him just losing the back end of the car over a bump or something like that. Um, it, it doesn't change the fact that it was his fault. You know, the, the car who was overtaking us is completely to blame for that. Um, and, you know, he, there's, there's no way of getting around that. But I'm not, I'm not entirely sure that this was intentional. Um, obviously, the... Alfa Romeo that we're looking at is is not to blame. He's just following the line. He's just keeping straight. That's all well and good. That's all fine. But uh, yeah, the car on the outside, I think I think he just loses control of the car, um, possibly over this this ridge that we're just going over now. In fact, I think that's pretty much when it happens. Uh, we get over the ridge, and yeah, then he starts to lose the back end. So I think this was kind of you know what wasn't and you can see in the the left hand side there he's he's a bit all over the road at that point so i think he's just he's either lost the car or he's not a very good driver and he's just you know doesn't know what he's doing because he, you're on a straight this this sort of thing shouldn't really be happening and of course then he comes over to the left it's a total takeout there's no getting around that um but as always there's a card in the top right for you to decide on who you thought was at fault uh, for this one but again another pretty clear one so the final race we're back on gta and uh it's 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 a massacre race a bit of a cluster of things all happen a few cars come together and um uh, the, the person who we're driving as is kind of the innocent party in this one but if we go back and take a quick look at what exactly happens it's pretty easy to you know get to decipher it so we've got the pink massacre there is i don't know whether he he gets into the back in fact let's let's just scroll it back let's go back a few seconds yeah he gets into the back of the the blue massacre in front so pink goes into the back of blue gets a bit of an oversteer moment and is slowed down because of that Red then tries to go around the outside of pink, but he's nowhere close enough to be able to do that. And there's obviously, you know, there's a wall right there. We covered outside overtakes as well in episode three. So go back to that if you want to get an idea of what the rules are. We also um, went over, you know, the rules on the ex exit of a corner in episode four. So he, he's nowhere near close enough to be able to, there isn't even a gap there, to be honest, you know, that. That, that isn't a gap that you can get a car through, so there's no real reason to be going round the outside there. He should have, he should break at this point and not continue to push this, but he does. 
gets into the side and the, the back end. Again, another classic pit maneuver that we've been seeing throughout the course of this. Uh, most takeouts in races uh, that, are, that are very clear takeouts, like what we've seen today, are, are just full speed slamming into someone or pit maneuvers, really, um, because they are very effective at taking someone out. So, and obviously you can't do that in proper racing. But yeah, the, it's just an innocent party from the perspective of the yellow Masakro. He, he's, he's totally innocent. Red gets into the side of pink. Pink gets turned around. They both end up in the wall. They bounce back off the wall onto the track. And obviously red then clips yellow. Pink kind of gets away with it unscathed, largely unscathed anyway. So at least that's something. Um, but obviously... Yellow was the innocent party in that, and I would put the blame on red almost 100%. Uh, he he kind of went for a went for a move that wasn't on, went for a space that wasn't there, um, and it was it was that that then caused you know a, a multitude of crashes beyond that. So again, a, another probably pretty easy one, but there is a card in the top right that will pop up. And you can vote on who you thought was at fault. Pink, red. I probably won't even put yellow in the poll because he was just minding his own business. Um, but yeah, some pretty pretty easy uh, e easy clips to to look at this week. And that's something that you know I want to mix this up, mix this series up a little bit. It's it's about reviewing clips that you guys send in, so they don't always have to be teachable moments they don't always have to be where we've got to really delve into the rules like the first few episodes have been and really try and figure out you know what was going on there can be some episodes i feel where we're just looking at some clips and settling some 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 incidents for people uh so obviously on the flip side of that there's going to be other episodes where we're going to include, say, real-life motorsport and Formula One races, as and when they happen in 2019. If there's any incidents, I can try to include some footage of uh, F1 races or other kind of racing series and go over um, racing incidents alongside things that you guys submit. And we'll kind of just have a bit of a mix. So let me know in the comments what you want to see from this series. You know, Do you want a mix of all kinds of different things, like more easy to decide things like this or... Uh, do you want the specific hard to decide things that we've been talking about in the first few episodes and getting delving deep into the rules? Let me know because obviously what you guys want uh, will, will change the direction of this series. It is, it is obviously a still a very new series, so I do want to, uh, to, to, to make sure that it goes in the direction that you guys want to see. But that's pretty much it for this episode. Let me know, obviously, all your thoughts down below and in the polls on the video itself. You can find in the video description all the info and links that you may need to submit your own clips. And if you'd like to support me, you can do so on Patreon by becoming a YouTube member or simply subscribing and liking the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.